Schoolie Palooza. Where do I begin? This week we're trying to add more solar. These things are heavy. It's like we're back in the bus build days, guys. How do we get these massive panels up there and not have them suddenly blow away and break? In this two-part series, we're taking you along to Schoolie Palooza. Man, I love bus people. It's been a whirlwind of amazingness. A gathering of nomads that live in school buses. A week filled with celebration, bus tours, and community. 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 I like it. It's moving day. And guess where we're going? Schooly Palooza. For those of you building, you've probably been there too, where you're still in your build and you're watching all the people go to Schooly Palooza and feeling like so jealous that you can't go. And that's been us for a while now. And we're so excited to be going for the first time ever. But before we pull out of here, we're picking up some solar panels. We've only had half of the solar array that we planned to. And it's a little tough in winter with the short days, there's less sunlight. These things are heavy. Well, we've got them. Yay! They're so huge. The only place we could think of to store them that we could fit is on top of the bed. Moving blankets. I need to get out. Come on. Come on. Good girl. Did I make it? Yeah. Yes, you did. How's that feel? Sure, it's gonna slide anywhere. Feels pretty solid. Yeah, I think it's super solid. I don't think they're going anywhere. Schoolie Palooza is a free annual gathering in the desert, or actually, they call it an ungathering because it's not really an organized event. You just find coordinates and show up. It's always a little nerve wracking when you're pulling into like a dirt road and you don't know where you're going, but we're trusting these coordinates work out. I don't want to say it, but this road isn't bad at all. Let's see if it gets horrible in a second. Getting a little more bumpy. I don't see any schoolies yet. Driving in and out of my parents' driveway was great preparation going back on these rough roads. We didn't come down this road for nothing. <laughs> well, I can recognize that bus yeah. from Gypsy Minstrel. So many. This is introverts. This, this is the introvert camp? Yep. Yeah. Now, how do we find our friends? But pulling into camp with friendly faces waving at us felt like arriving home, even though we'd never been here before. That's our friend! <laughs> so, we're gonna drive around a little bit and figure out where to park. We uh, found our friends, they're spread out. <laughs> so we put ourselves in the middle for now and figured we can always move. Yeah, we're here a couple days before it actually starts. But it's apparently gonna all fill up and so we don't know who our neighbors will be right now. We're like, don't have anybody right next to us. So I don't know if this was a good decision to put ourselves between our friends, but not directly next to friends. We'll find out. Slowly, buses kept arriving the neighborhood filled in. <laughs> what is that? Then we met our neighbors and their horse, Victor. Denis, uh, Pellerin, I'm from Quebec. José, Marion. And how long have you been traveling for? Normal for four years. And what made you decide to bring Victor with you? The first plan was to come down to Arizona on a horse, but I didn't find any partners so or mm. travel with the uh, Harveys. And just rub it in the neck. Yeah. You like it. Oh. There was no shortage of pets traveling with their owners. 
What's this bunny's name? Bob. Bob. Bob the bunny. <laughs> what do you got there? What kind of lizard is it? Um, I have no idea, but her name's Olive. <laughs> that kitty's walking with her. How did she get that way? She might have started when he was young. Yeah. Our cats, however, chose to stay indoors and enjoy the entertainment provided by our new hummingbird feeder. We've walked around a bit, got a little bit of a lay of the land, bumped into friends, met some new people, and we're just gonna have a chill night. Go sit and watch the sunset and see what this week holds for us. I'm excited. Who knows what's gonna happen? <laughs> <laughs> as we watched two ultralight pilots take off right in front of us. We didn't know what was in store for us yet, but it was already clear that this would be a unique experience with extraordinary people. We're settling into our camp here. And we've had the solar panels uh, for about a day, but I'm eager to get them up and installed, especially on a day like this. We got nice sunshine. I'm gonna go ahead and start to work on my brackets. That way, if we were the wind dies down like it is right now and we were ready, uh, my buddy Scott and maybe a couple other friends will help me get these things up on the roof. That's gonna be the tricky part because if the wind catches one of those big panels, we're in trouble. It's like we're back in the bus build days, guys. We're gonna try a new method. One of the problems we had when we put solar up on the rails before is that uh, the holes weren't exactly lined up. This part that mounts to the panel, you can see it's uh, oblong, so you can slide it around and move it to get it to line up. These, I need to do the same thing to get it to line up with the rail. One thing I'm taking away from doing it the first time. I've got them all uh, cut, but they're real rough. Mm, just met a new neighbor, uh, Chris, who uh, said if I need jewels to ask him. So I'm gonna go ask him, see if he has a file. Hi, I'm Chris. Uh, this is our bus, Senior Bus and Steam. And as luck would have it, he had a metal file I could use before. And here's the after. I hope those work. They're real rough, but that's not what matters. I'm gonna think I'm gonna probably put a washer on them, hold them down a little tighter, uh, just get a little more to bite onto. But uh, it's kinda cool to see like this community here of all the school bus people just uh, lending a hand, letting you borrow their tools, just coming over and say, hey, if you wanna borrow any tools, let me know, pretty cool. This is our friend Scott, who does solar installs. We hired him to help us out. How nice it is to have met Scott, though he can help us with this. These solar panels are pretty big, so... Don and I doing it would have probably not been fun. Got all the uh, panels set and ready to go. Got a helper here, Chris, is gonna help us hoist them up. And then uh, we'll get them up to Scott and batten them down and when the wind dies down. But it's gonna be getting windier in the next few days, so today's the day we need to do it, but they're big panels, so we're trying to figure out the game plan about how do we get these massive panels up there and not have them suddenly blow away and break. That would be awful. <laughs>
With the wind trying to take our solar panels away like a sail, I was so grateful to have the help. Man, I love bus people. We all got our same set of tools. We're all ready to go. Everyone's ready to get in, do a project. Nice, man. Well, we appreciate you. I love that everybody has the same ladder. We got three ladders from three different buses. So that's ready to go. Now we'll set the next one on. Hey, uh, Brian. We now have our solar panels in the back mounted. We didn't wire them up yet, so maybe in the next couple days we'll get around to doing that. Yay, solar panels! Yay. Oh, you can't hit that. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? So on this uh, original installation we just had a little uh, two plug wall input that the PV connectors went into but uh, Scott's got an idea to just make a custom one. We can put holes in that and then tighten them up, is that what you're thinking? That's what we're gonna do. So we'll put one set on this side, one set on this side, drill it, put some anti-fatigues in it, drill a hole in the center to go down. What made you decide to get into Nomad Solar and, and literally be the Nomad Solar guy? Kind of a natural progression, so I went from uh, being a mechanic for years and working on the DC side of everything. Uh, and when I got out of being a mechanic and decided to get on the road, a lot of stuff transfers over between uh, automotive DC and solar. And once I did my own system, I found out that everybody needed help. It's a subject a lot of people don't know a lot about. I kind of joke it was an accidental business but I really enjoy doing it. I like getting people energy independent. And uh, it's something I've been doing for years, just in a different facet. And how long have you been a nomad? Uh, three and a half years now. Hit the road three and a half years ago, sold the house, sold everything, and best decision I ever made. So you're not looking for putting down roots anytime soon? No, no, I like the road. I like being in the wind and doing whatever I want, whenever I want. All right, got one. Got the second one, great. In total, we put another 1,230 watts of panels on the back, bringing our system to about 2,700 watts now. 1,235. That's more than if we ran the generator. Yeah. Now that we've had our solar up there, and man, it's a game changer. I'm thrilled with the system we designed with our friends at Battleborn and Dragonfly Energy. We are charging up every day. We haven't had to pull the generator out. We're using three GC3 270 amp hour batteries. And by noon, we've been able to charge up our batteries to 100%. Now that we've got our complete electric system finally built and working, 
I think we're just gonna take the next month or two to see how the system works for us, how much we can run our appliances. We've got electric water heater, we've got a dishwasher, we've got too many splits, we've got an electric fireplace. But we're able to use more power and not worry about the generator right now and that feels so good. This was only part one of a two-part series for Schooly Palooza. The next one's gonna come out on Sunday. And we can't wait to share it with you because this has been probably the single most exciting experience we've had since we've been on the road. So come back next Sunday, February 12th at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time as we premiere part two of Schooly Palooza. Because it's gonna be a premiere, we'll be able to chat with you on the right of the screen in real time as the video plays. So be sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell on YouTube because that'll give you some alerts to let you know when our Schooly Palooza 2 video is gonna be going live.